All right, Chris here again. Let's go ahead and select the back plate. I'm going to use the multi-cut tool and I'm going to start creating edge loops. And my goal here is to create edge loops so that I can delete the faces on the back frame that rest within the D pad frame. Um, you'll see what I mean here in a second. But I essentially want an edge on the back plate to be resting behind the little D-pad frame that we made. Once I've done that, we go to face mode and now I can uh, select the faces and delete them. Let's go to vertex mode and I'm just going to take these vertices and nudge them a little bit just to make sure they're um, completely hidden so we don't see like a tiny hole in the controller by the D-pad. This one especially is needs to be tucked in a little bit. All right, now I'll select the D-pad frame, hit Control-1 to isolate it. These faces will never be seen in the back here, so I'm going to select all the back faces and delete them. Then we go to Edge Mode and select this inner border edge, extrude it, and move it back like so. And once I get the depth that I want, something like this, we're going to use a new tool, and let's select this entire edge loop here and go to mesh fill hole so that filled it but now we have a giant end gone so i'm going to go to my multi-cut tool and i will um, create edges to get rid of that end gone we've done this many times before um, in this project so i'm going to speed through this next little part um, as i do it so i'll just go to my multi-cut tool and I'll start creating quads out of these. Sometimes it can be, if you're trying to go too fast, it can be easy to misclick and not actually hit the vertex. So you just want to kind of be careful as you're going through and don't be afraid to undo and do it again. Great. Let's create the D-pad. So I created a cube here. I'm going to move it to the center of where the D-pad button is and then scale it down like so. <clears throat> Something like this. And I'll move it out. And I want to look at sort of how far these buttons stick out from the surface. And they are quite far. So the center is kind of, you know, pushed in a bit. So I'll move it in a little. focus in on this just double check make sure it's looking good and centered then I'll go to face mode and select these outer faces and then I will extrude and I'll turn keep faces together off and pull on the thickness and get this to a spot that I like 
Uh, but first, let's go ahead and grab these outside edges and give the taper that we want. So we're going to pull this out a bit, like so. Just make sure that's looking good. We'll bevel the entire thing. We'll kind of see. Let's turn segments to two. I'm going to take the fraction down and let's just see how that looks. It's starting to look pretty good. Let's turn the fraction down a little bit more. Let's create an edge loop in the center here and use the same trick we have in the past by selecting this middle vertex. Let's go ahead and with it selected, let's click bevel. We'll select all four vertices and actually make sure we're only selecting the front. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and just delete these back faces. These faces will never be seen, so they're not really um, useful for us. Now that we've had those back faces deleted, we'll go back to vertex mode, select those four vertices then go to Edit Mesh and Circularize. We'll do two divisions, and then we'll play with the radial offset again to scale this up. It's looking pretty good. We've created a bunch of N-Gons, so let's go ahead and fix that. And we've done this before. I'm going to straighten these and line them up using Vertex Snap and the scale tool again. select these outer ed edges and bevel them so that I have some edge flow. Then I'll take these inner faces and extrude them in and scale them in as well. You could also use the thickness slider and the offset slider to do the same thing in this circumstance. We'll create an inner edge loop and we'll scale it up a little bit and then we'll bevel it so that we get a nice transition. Let's try this at first. A little too strong. I'm going to scale this back in a bit. Something like that. And that's looking better. And in a little smooth preview, we can see that it's going to look pretty good after we smooth it. 
So let's say that piece is done. I'm just going to rotate around and just see how the overall thing is looking. Let's not forget to save our work. And in the next video, we'll look at modeling the other buttons.